Hello, it's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Ink Nouveau, and uh, I've got a VAC 700 here, and I've got this other little thingy here that is a nib unit for a VAC 700. Why do I have two separate things? Well, Twisby is changing the VAC 700 from Bach nibs to Yovo nibs. Um, it's two different manufacturers, and uh, they're kind of in transition right now. This is December 13th of 2012. Uh, today when I'm shooting this video. Um, so they're kind of in transition mode right now. In the future, all the VAC 700s are going to be made with Yovo nibs, uh, but the older ones have Bach. They're kind of in transition and they're including a Yovo with the pen that has a Bach on it already. So I want to show you how to swap out the two and how to tell the difference as to which one you have. Um, now the reason that they're making this change is because they've had some complaints of flow issues, particularly the pen writing really dry or breaking up um, while trying to write with the Bach nibs and they've made a change over to Yovo. So um, if you have an existing VAC 700 that has a Bach nib on it and you're not happy with the way that it writes, um, email twisby at twisbyink at gmail.com and they will set you up with a new Yovo nib. Uh, but if you've got one and it's writing just fine, I wouldn't really worry about it unless it becomes a problem. Uh, but anyway, let's assume you have the nib already. I want to show you how to swap it out. It's a real easy change, so let's do it. When you buy your Twisby VAC 700s, if it's in this transition period, like it will be for a little while, you're going to have your pen, as it would normally would be packed, and you're going to have this extra little nib unit. Um, now, what you're going to want to do if you're buying at any time, I'm going to say like December 2012 through maybe the next couple of months, maybe through February 2012, depending on how fast the retailer sells their pens, you may want to, um, if it's not very clear in the retailer's description, you may want to email, ask them, you know, what is going on with their particular nibs. I don't think there's oh, too many Twisby retailers out there, so it shouldn't be, shouldn't be that fuzzy, but... Um, anyway, I, I sell these on my website, and I'm going to try to be as clear as possible as to what's going on. That's also kind of what this video is to, for, is to clarify it. But anyway, so you've got the Twisby VAC 700, so it's going to come with, you know, the pen and the case and all that good stuff. Uh, but if you're, um, if you're unsure about which nib that you have in your pen, there's a real easy way to tell. Um, and if you can just look at the nib, here, let me get you nice and close. There's the nib. If you turn it over on its left side, it's going to have the nib size designation on the side next to the Twisby name. That is a Bach nib. The newer ones, the Yovo ones, um, which are going to come in this little case, are going to be a little different. Uh, the way to tell the difference between these two nibs, um, I mentioned that the, the nib size designation is on the side of the Bach. Well, with Yovo, it is right underneath the Twisby logo, uh, the Twisby name, right there. It's hard to tell, but you can see it. So on the Bach one, it's over on the side. Yovo, it's here on the top. So that, at a glance, kind of gives you a way to see which one you have. Now, the, I'll talk about the case. It, it is screwed in here. It's actually a really nice case. It's the same one that's on the 540 um, nibs, uh, if you're familiar with those. It's got this little black piece, and it's actually kind of interesting. This is actually not used for this pen. Um, this is a little plug that screws onto the 540 body when you're changing the nib, but you're not going to use that for the VAC 700. Um, it comes with a housing, a nib and a feed, that um, is kind of you know, um, what's the word? Incomplete from what you would normally get if you were buying a Twisby nib unit. A Twisby nib unit comes with the grip section and everything like you see here. So if you bought a Twisby nib unit on its own, it would look like this and you would just unscrew it and put it back in and, and that would be your nib swap. It would be that simple. It's a little more complicated here, which is why I wanted to clarify. Um, the housing you can take out the grip section and stuff, but it's in a couple of pieces. It's kind of a pain, and it would, it's harder than the method that I want to show you. So I'm not even going to bother showing you that method because I really don't want you to do it. The easiest way to swap these things out is to do it um, like you do with the Monteverde nibs, if you've ever seen my video on swapping Monteverde nibs. Um, the nib and the feet are friction fit inside the grip section. Um, the best way to get it out, i found, is to grip the pen firmly like this. 
take your fingers and grab the base of the nib and the feed, put one finger on the top. It doesn't really matter whether you do it this way or this way. I naturally tend to do it more this way. That's just me. Um, but you want to make sure you're not grabbing the top or bending the tines or doing something crazy, squeezing the wings of the nib. You want to make sure that you're grabbing the base of it and kind of pinching it like that. And while you're doing that, you pull it away from the pen just like so. And it pops out and you got two different parts. Here's the feed, here's the nib, voila. And you'll set that aside. Now you'll do basically that same thing when you're getting the new nib and feed out of the feed housing. It just kind of pulls right out of there. And it helps if you hold it exactly like you pulled it out. Now I've handled enough nibs and feeds where I don't mind taking them apart and then putting them back together. But you, you may not be as um, experience with it and I totally understand that but hopefully this video helps you out now when you go to set it in this is the only really tricky part if you look in here I'm gonna try and show you in as much detail as possible when you look in here you'll see that there's a round opening which at a glance looks perfectly round but in fact it is not there is a inset right here that starts here and goes all the way around where the diameter on this half of the circle is just a little bit larger than this one that inset is made to fit the feed, or sorry, the nib, the metal nib on top of the feed. So this part right here is where the nib is going to set in. And this part down here is where the feed is going to set in. It's really subtle. It's really kind of hard to see. Um, but make sure that you're setting it in the right way. Otherwise, you're going to jam it in and you risk damaging your feed or bending your nib. So I am looking. I've got my correct orientation. And then I can just take and kind of set my nib and my feet in there. If, if you're unsure about if you're setting it in the right way, I'm going to intentionally set it in the wrong way. It's going to kind of stop me as soon as I get that nib in that grip section. But if I just kind of gently like rotate it as I'm kind of just pulsating it to see if it's going to fit, it'll kind of drop in naturally where it's supposed to. Um, if, it's, if it feels like you have to really force it, then you've got it in the wrong way. So there you go. So I can almost do it without even, without even really looking at it, just by feel to see. And then it'll kind of move a little bit. Um, and then you'll see on the feed here, there is an air channel uh, right here that kind of stops. And then it has this kind of thick plastic part right there. That's about where the feed is going to stop into the grip section. Okay, And it's going to stop pretty positively. I'm going to take the nib out for just a second. But if you take that feed and push it in, this is as far as it's going to go. Okay, so you've got that kind of fat part where the air channel stops, push it in, bam, that's where it stops. Okay, and the same thing is going to go for the feed, or for the nib. Gosh, I keep saying the wrong thing. Okay, so I'm setting them both in together. Um, now when you go to push them in, um, same kind of thing, try to stay away from grabbing and pinching weird things. Um, just kind of take and push it down as much together as you can. Um, if you need to, sometimes what happens is the feed goes in a little easier than the nib and you end up with this kind of thing where the nib is still kind of sticking out too far and then it looks kind of weird here, you know, the, the, lo the logo and the letter is way up there. Um, but the way to get the nib back in there, you can pull the whole thing out and then set it back in if you want. But if you want to just kind of gently push it in, you can kind of just gently grab the shoulders of the wings right here, of the nib right here and kind of push it down toward the feed just like that. Okay, and that's ultimately how you're going to want this thing to look, is you're going to want the um, two corners of the tip of the feed there to kind of meet up. It's not going to meet up exactly with the edge of the nib, but it's going to be pretty darn close. And then, of course, you just want to make sure that your alignment is correct. You want to make sure it's not like way cocked off to the side like that or anything there. And then just kind of do a visual inspection on your nib um, to make sure that you didn't accidentally bend it or anything like that. And then that is basically how you do it. So you're kind of left over with this, you know, spare nib housing thing that you can, you know, do whatever you want with it. Keep it, you know, as a spare just in case you, you happen to, you know, drop your nib and bend it or something like that. You at least have a backup. But that is how you swap out the nib on the Twisby VAC 700. So that's the VAC 700 nib swapping. If you have any other questions or comments, just leave a comment here on YouTube or on Inc. Nouveau. Thanks so much for spending time with me today and right on.